Hello everybody, just Joe here again to discuss our solar panel system for off-grid. Today I want to discuss the charge controller for the system. I've already discussed the solar panels in one video, the inverter in another video, so today we're going to do the charge controller. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and hit it for notifications on new videos coming out. So we already discussed the solar panels. Like I said, they all come in in five. They're all arranged in segments of five. Um, if you haven't watched that video, go ahead and watch it first. They all run on their negative and positives through these PVC pipes to the energy room, to the charge controller. We did discuss the bus bar through that hole there. So there's five on each segment and we have 30 panels. So that's obviously quite a bit of wires. So those wires go to bus bars and the link to that description is in the solar panel video. These right here. So once you have all your panels wired up, you're gonna wanna hook them up to a charge controller. The biggest tip I can give is never hook up your solar panels to a charge controller without hooking up your batteries first. You always want to have batteries hooked up to the panel first or hooked up to the system first before you plug in your panels. So if we were to take this cover off, there are going to be four connections here. One for battery positive, one for battery negative, one for solar positive, and one for solar negative. Like I said, you would hook up your batteries first. So if you're adding something to the system, you would obviously first do your positive for your batteries, then the negative for your batteries. As soon as you do that, the fans will kick on, this will kick on. Then you hook up your solar panels. Do not hook up your solar panels to the charge controller without hooking up your batteries first. So once you have your batteries hooked up, you will hook up your solar panels. Add first, then negative. So the bus bar, we have all of our positives run into one, and then this goes to the positive solar PV. This goes to the negative PV. It is pretty cramped in here. I may take this cover off for another video to do a more explanation, but just make sure nothing touches the, uh, the computer parts. Um, anything could cause a spark and obviously you, you don't want to do that. Um, something that I did not say in the inverter video that a lot of people don't realize is your inverter may be hooked up to your batteries and your charge controller is hooked up to your batteries, but they do not know each other exist. One's feeding in and one's taking out. Um... That's something a lot of people assume that because this says 55.7 volts that our inverter would therefore say the exact same thing. That is not the case. They are going to read a little bit differently. Sometimes they may read the same, but just know that just because they're both hooked up to your battery system, the inverter doesn't know the charge controllers there. The charge controller doesn't know the inverters here. One's putting in, one's taking out. With the inverter, you obviously are gonna wanna match it to your battery system voltage. So if you have a 48 volt system, which we do, you're gonna want a 48 volt inverter. The charge controller, on the other hand, if you had a 24 volt system or a 40 volt system or a 12 volt system, either or, you can still use the same charge controller. This is probably the one component that I did not get on Amazon. I will leave a link in the description as far as where I got it from. I went with this one because it was one of the best reviewed ones. And it also, if we were to get, say, 30 more panels, you can run this in line with another one. So you could just hook up another charge controller to another 30 panels and run these in parallel. Um, 
I do not have the money to do that. But if you are planning to add to your system, that is a, a big deal to have that option. Um, so that being said, this charge controller is a Midnight Classic. Um, it has never given us any trouble, I will say. Um, I know a lot of charge controllers don't last but a year or right past the warranty. This particular one has lasted since we built our system. So I am very pleased with it. Um, your display screen is going to tell you how much voltage you have coming in. How many watts that is. How many kilowatts you have pulled in for the day so today for instance is a sunny day in february sorry just got a text um so we've already pulled in 8.2 kilowatts for the day it's going to show you what your batteries are at and the amperage that you are pulling in and then what mode the charge controller is in the charge controller is going to stay in bulk mode until it gets to a certain battery voltage then it's going to go into what's called an absorb mode and then once the batteries are basically tip top full it's going to go into float mode so we prefer to allow the system if we can to get into float mode because by getting into float mode your batteries are all the way full so when the sun goes down you can know that it's not going to kick off in the middle of the night so when we do our hot water heater, which I discussed in the inverter video, we try to let it get to at least 48 volts before we turn the hot water heater on. Um, if the inverter gets down to 42, like I discussed, it does kick off. If for some reason your inverter kicks off your system because it's trying to save your batteries, this will still keep feeding energy into your batteries obviously you don't want to do that so if you keep it at above 48 you can know that it's not going to kick your system off um, if it does happen that's obviously okay you just have to come turn your inverter off and turn it back on we try not to do that as much as possible um, for obvious reasons so you can change a lot of your parameters with these buttons. Let's see. So you can change your volts. Like I discussed, you can change what volts it's going to stop absorbing or start absorbing and start floating and stop floating here. Um, this particular one, the one thing I do like about it is it comes pre-programmed with all of that information already in it for safety reasons. You know, you, you don't want to set it too high or too low. So, like I said, you can change that. I, I do not. Um, change your charge times, comps. Don't I don't touch any of that. Um, If you were wanting to change any of that, you just hit main menu, go to the one that you want to change, hit enter, and then change your components there. Then to get back to the main screen, simply hit status. It's fairly simple. Um, this does have an internal fan, so if it was really hot, the fan would kick on. If you're pulling in, for instance, earlier today, we were pulling in 39 amps when we were still bulking. And I did notice the fan was running. Um, it is February here, so it's, it's fairly cool slash cold. So I have the soffit vents covered up behind it. In the summertime when it's really, really hot, I do take these off and it's just a soffit vent to let air in just to help keep everything. The fan will still run, that's what it's made to do, but just to help keep it a little cooler in here because it does get really hot. Um, right now we're only like 68 degrees, but I have a vent here and a vent up there. 
just to allow circulation. I've got more on the other wall to let air come in and go out. So I feel like I'm leaving something out, but I just wanted to make a video of each component. Like I said, the main thing to take away from this video is to never hook up your solar panels to this until your batteries are hooked up first. If you do so, it will fry something in here and it's not, it's not a cheap component. Um, also, what I said about the charge controller not knowing the inverters here and the inverter not knowing the charge controllers here, that's something a lot of people assume that they know each other are hooked up to the batteries. For instance, our battery system, I have the charge controller hooked up to one battery and then the inverter is hooked up to the complete opposite end of the battery system. So they do not know each other are there. Um, the kilowatts will reset on a daily basis so you can keep track of how many kilowatts you pull in on a daily basis if you, if you want to. Um, like I said, we just wanna make sure we get to float if we can if we only get to absorb, it normally still doesn't kick off during the night. Um, that being said, we don't run a lot of things overnight, um, like the hot water heater, like I discussed. We always do that in the peak of the day before normally like 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Sometimes if it's really cold and the groundwater is cold, it takes a little longer. So it may take 10 a.m. to 11.30 Um if, this, if it's really cloudy in the morning, sometimes we push it and don't even turn on the hot water heater until later in the day. And if we do wait until too late in the day, and then it's not sunny enough after we turn it off, sometimes the system does shut down at 3 or 4 a.m. Um, the only thing we have hooked up that's really imperative is the fridge and freezer. So if it does kick off for an hour or two, it, it's okay we prefer it to not because if we if it does like i said all we do is come out here and turn this off and turn it back on which is okay to do i just feel like the more you use the button the, the faster it could wear out so it's better to just leave it alone if it's not broken um i guess that's about it for this video um, your information on your charge controller. Ooh, let me flip around. Is here. Like I said, though, whether you're, if you're running just a 12 volt system or a 24 volt system, you can still use the same Midnight Classic charge controller. Your inverter is the only thing that needs to be battery, battery even on the same batteries. Um, it needs to match your battery system. 48 volt system requires a 48 volt inverter. 24 volt system requires a 24 volt inverter. But this charge controller, if we were to switch it to a 24 volt system, we could use it just the same. And like I said, this can be ran in parallel with another exact one if your system is really big so i guess that's all for this video i will make another video about our battery systems and that will be the last one for the components um i have an overview video but that's not very informative if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will be happy to answer. Like I said, I will put the link for this charge controller in the description. The solar panel bus bars, the link for that from Amazon is in the inverter in the solar panel video, along with the wires that connect the solar panels to the bus bars and the solar panels themselves. The inverter and the, and the um, remote control panel for it are in the inverter video. That being said, the control panel actually came with 
the inverter. It wasn't purchased separately. So I guess that's it for today, guys. Um, I will see y'all on another day and discuss the batteries. Y'all have a good one. Thanks. Bye.